Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. She can hear me. Can you in the audience hear me? Oh, there we go. All right. Good evening and welcome to the regular council meeting of January 22nd, 2019. If we can have Councillor Lesser please lead the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Latina? Here. Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor Rell? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Morin Bello? Here. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, we'll start the meeting with public comment. We have no hearings this evening. So we'll move into general comments. The public has five minutes to speak. Please come on up and state your name and address. Mr. Colantonio. Good evening. Good evening, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. I guess uh, last meeting I was not really too clear to where I got into a, almost an accident. But anyway, I meant to say that uh, coming back from church on uh, Christmas Eve, heading north on Walker Hill Road, right in front of uh, the high school driveway. I was basically headed north from Walls Road, turned on north on Walker Hill Road, and in front of the high school driveway, there was a car parked on the north side and the shoulder. Now, as, any, as everybody knows probably, you know, in that location we do have three lanes. One in the northbound, one in the southbound. And the middle lane is a combine to make a left turn on the high school if you're headed basically from coming from the south, or uh, taking a, a left on the street opposite the driveway. And I complained. She said, why? I almost got into an accident. Of course, I'm getting older, so I'm not as uh, alert as I used to be. But in that location now, in the northbound and southbound on both sides, you, you have two signs which says left lane must turn left. Two, no stopping or standing any time. And one sign, again, on each side of the road, no parking school days, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And of course, you know, the, the last no parking between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., that's the one that I, I have a question with. What does it mean? Does it mean that any other time I can park there? There is no room. There is no shoulder. You barely have three lanes, probably about 10 feet wide each, with no shoulder at all. When you have a sign that says, no parking school day, 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., does that mean that I can park there any other time? I don't think so. I mean, why not have just one sign on both sides and says, <coughs> no parking any time? There is no room. I don't know who designed it, but I would like to talk probably to <laughs> the town engineer or whomever. You know, the, this is crazy. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gus. Mr. Mazzarella, come on up. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. Good evening. <clears throat> I'd like to follow up on the vehicle lift agenda item. Uh, it seems to me it's a little bit of a moving target. This <coughs> lift project has been discussed for 18 months now. It started out that the lift was not in service, it was not being used. <clears throat> 
It's then during that July 17, 2017 meeting, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Barry and Councilor Hemmen both asked for dollar values of what the town was spending on truck maintenance and how much it was costing to send these vehicles elsewhere for work. <clears throat> and we never got an answer for that. Also during that meeting, the uh, Director of Physical Services said that if this lift was approved, we would be able to, quote, bring back the majority of the work that it, to our own in-house staff. <clears throat> I personally don't think any work was being sent out. Fast forward 18 months, we now know that the lift is in service, is being used daily. Uh, again, people asked, how much money is the town spending on this truck maintenance? How much work is being vended out? I thought uh, Councillor Forrest was being very diplomatic. He asked the question in four or five different manners, and he wasn't getting an answer. He got some cost estimates of what a certain job would cost, and I don't think it, you have to be a rocket scientist to realize it's going to cost more if you send it to a another company to have done rather than do it in in-house. But that's not what we're asking. We're asking how much money is being spent to fix the trucks and how much money is being spent because the lift can't lift the trucks. Uh, I think if you're going to decide on a project of this magnitude, you should be able to evaluate all the data and, and come to a logical conclusion. I don't know what the number is. Maybe it's $5,000. Maybe it's $100,000. I think it makes a big difference when you're deciding what to do. If we're only sending a few trucks out and the, uh, the uh, assistant director of physical services, he, he cautioned that we're doing 95% of the work, if not more, in-house now. So. We're talking about saving 5%. I don't understand it. It was also discussed about this OSHA inspection and that this, these controls for this lift were in the uh, path of the electrical panel. So there's a code that says you have to have 36 inch clear space from an electrical panel. In case the panel fails, nobody's going to get hurt. I believe that this might be grandfathered in because that's the way the building was built some 50 years ago, I believe. Not sure, but so I would like to see this report that says that recommends we buy a new lift. I, I've never experienced that with OSHA. They're there to provide enforcement of regulations uh, for safety. And if that's a dangerous item and it's not in compliance, then I believe they're going to tell you to make it in compliance. I don't believe they're going to say, you really should buy a new lift. That's not the way they work. So I'm curious to see that report. And I think you all should be interested in seeing it also before you vote on this. I made a suggestion that you could possibly relocate the controls for this lift. And that just fell on deaf ears. I was told that if they were going to attempt that, they would need to do an engineering study uh, to make sure it could be done and how much it was going to cost. And we would have to dig up the floor and on and on. Well, you don't want to do a study to see if you can uh, save some money and move the, these controls yet you haven't done a study to see whether it's worth spending $170,000. Oh, by the way, it went up another 10000 between the workshop meeting and tonight's meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mazzarella. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Come on up, Mr. Young.
Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, at the last town council meeting, I listened pretty closely to that issue on that uh, truck, truck lift that you wanted to buy and voted on, and you're going to vote on again tonight. And uh, I, 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 I really have strong reservations on the idea of how much we're going to, how much we've been spending. Just like Tom was saying, uh, is if it's only five percent and it's only a few large vehicles, why do we need to go out and spend all this money? when the other lift is doing it okay with the exception of 5% of the equipment and send the other out. Uh, we don't need to, we have too many, too many dollars that have been going out of here. We need to save dollars. And saving dollars could possibly, if you did an analysis, and I looked in the agenda, figuring, hey, it's in there. No, it's not in there. That's not much for transparency. It's been asked for by several people, and we still don't see it. And I would hope that you would hold off your vote tonight, before, you know, and get it, and analyze it, and see what it looks like, and let us all know. I mean, it is our money. Next. I'm going to go back on to uh, your purchase of, of the, of the um, Keisha farm. You're going to buy that farm for $75,000 an acre, uh, I've, been re I've been reviewing properties that have sold in central Connecticut. Matter of fact, all over Connecticut. But I, I've, I re I've looked at those that have sold. I've looked at those that are currently on the market. I don't see but few that are anywhere near your price per acre. As a matter of fact, I missed one um, <clears throat> in Glastonbury. I missed a 50-acre parcel, better known as on Manson Hill Road. It's in South Glastonbury, actually, 698 Manson Road, uh, Manson Hill Road. Uh, it's better known as the uh, Rose Berry Farm. We're all familiar with that name. Uh, Mrs. Rose sold it to the town of Glastonbury. She sold 50 acres for 1.9 million dollars. That came out to $38,000. And this was a going business. This was a going business that was making a lot of money. Not like what you're buying. You're buying something that has absolutely nothing going for itself to bring in any money. So town, of, town of Glastonbury was extremely smart in this purchase. They teamed up with a local farmer. I believe it was called Bell, Belltown Orchards, Belltown Hill Orchards, some name like that. And uh, the, the orchard guy bought the farm, and Glassenberry bought the development rights, all for $1.9 million. So there's two owners. One owns the land to farm, and the other owns the development rights. But the fact remains, $1.9 million for 50 acres of nice orchards. Orchards that are improved. Orchards that have a lake, or I should say a huge pond. They have irrigation systems through it. They have electric through it where they need it. They have buildings. They have much, much more for $38,000. So I come up with this analysis of properties that sold in Glastonbury and Windsor, three of them. They averaged 185 acres at $4.68 million. The average price for those three properties in the, in the year 2018 was $25,300. I rounded it off. Should have been 297, but I rounded it off to 300. And you know, you take $25,300 times your 32 acres, you're at a pretty low number. And that's all your property is worth. And instead, you're going forward to buy that property. And I would advise you, or urge you, to find a way to step aside on that deal. That deal is going to hurt us horrendously. Nobody's buying any property. 
it was said that, oh, some developer is going to come in and snap it up. I have a list of properties. None of them have sold. Here's the list. Okay, wrap it up, Mr. Here's Young. Here's the list. Thank None you. None of them have sold. I've seen several that have dropped their prices. So I would urge you very strongly to consider weaseling out of that deal. And it's very easy to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience who would like to speak tonight? Anybody else that would like to speak? Okay. Seeing none, we'll close the public comments. Are there any council members who have reports this evening? Councilor Latina? Uh, the WACPD met last week, um, and there were a couple issues that came up. I think, Kathy, you saw an email about Lee Seekus asking about some sidewalk issues that were reported back in October, and uh, they were seeking some answers. I know there was an email chain from November. It's specifically to 95 and 87 Wells Road. I think last conversations were that the homeowners were getting a contractor, and they were going to be fixing the road, or sidewalk, rather, and that the state also had a uh, piece of sidewalk where a tree had kind of upheaved it. So they were looking for an answer as to where that all stood. Um, the other thing is, is that they did release a press release about accepting grant applications for mini grants that they're offering to Weathersfield residents and or organizations. Those are $250 grants. They're issued on a quarterly basis to benefit persons with special needs. Um, and uh, the contact would be Natalie Morrison from that committee. Um, I'm wondering if this press release is going to be put on the town website for folks. That was a request that was made. Uh, yes, it will be put up on the website. Okay, great. Um, and their next meeting is in March. March. Okay, thank you. And Kathy, will you get back to Mr. Sekas and let him know the status on the sidewalks, please? Yeah, we're still, um, the weather kind of came in. And so um, it is on the books, and staff are watching it, and the sidewalks should be fixed in the spring. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Rell? The Planning and Zoning um, Committee or Commission met last Tuesday. They took up um, something of a controversial uh, issue. This is the properties, the two houses that were uh, raised on the corner of Middletown and Maple. Um, the restaurant supply company has a proposal to change that from residential to commercial. That was approved on a six to three vote last Tuesday in PNZ. Uh, the uh, property owner has not uh, put forth plans on what he wants to do with that property, um, but there are you know, neighbors who have concerns about uh, the transitioning that from a commercial or from a residential to a commercial. Um, to alleviate some of the, the concerns that those folks have, um, both the HDC and PNZ have to review any plans for any type of um, building that's going to go on there or any type of work that goes on there. Um, so for those that were at the PNZ meeting who had concerns about what was going uh, on, they still have a chance to uh, voice any um, concerns that they have uh, before both the HDC and the uh, PNZ when those plans do come up in the future. Thank you for that update. Anybody else? Councilor Hurley? Um, I was at the Housing Authority meeting last Monday, and they voted to nominally raise rents to keep up with ongoing costs. Um, it wasn't a lot, but they have to raise them a little for those residents. Okay, thank you. Councilor Lester? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Veterans Committee met last week uh, it was their second meeting, uh, and just want to report they elected, they are appointed their officers. Uh, the chairs, their co-chairs are um, Doug Shipman and Karen Opper. The vice chair is Rick Newell, and the secretary is Helen Nye. And that's all I have to report. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilor Bratton. Thank you. Um, I attended the Bicycle and Pedestrian Stakeholders Committee meeting on January 10th. Um, and this group uh, was formulated, they, they put together a vision to make Weathersfield a bicycle and friendly, uh, pedestrian friendly community. So they're looking to build a network of safe, convenient, accessible infrastructure that encourages travel, recreation, economic vitality, and a healthy quality of life for all users and all modes of transportation. And so for the last few months, 
There's been work groups um, that's looked at conditions, um, reviewed his, um, some of the plans that have already been on the books that weren't implemented. Um, they've gathered feedback from over 600 responses um, from the online and paper survey. They had a workshop of over 90 people, I think, in attendance. Um, then now they've received grants to um, improve uh, Walcott Hill, um, the Highland and Thornton Bush area, Old Weathersfield, um, and they're still working on others. And so right now they're at the point where they need some help. Interested residents can get involved and help put together the plan. So there's a lot of work that's been done, and now is a really great time to come and participate and be part of um, helping prepare the completion of that plan. So there's two meetings in February, February 7th and the 28th, 6.30 in the town council chambers. And there's more information on their Facebook page, um, which is Bike Walk Weathersfield. Thanks. Thank you. Any other um, reports? OK. Um, then we'll head into council comments. Any council members have comments to make? Councilor Hurley. I just want to thank everybody. Oh, first of all, this is not a town of Weathersfield event, but it's supported by the town. I want to thank everybody for coming out and supporting um, Weathersfield section of the St. Patrick's Day Parade on Saturday night. It was a success. The snow held off for a while. Um, we're honoring. Fire Chief Rich Bailey and Rick Gary, and they will be walking in the parade as Weathersfield's honorees. Thank you. Do we, have, do we have a good spot in the parade this year? We have Section 4. It is a good spot. Hey, four. <laughs> All right. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> and then I just I saw today that Russ Moran introduced a $15 an hour minimum wage, which I think will hurt our small businesses and seasonal workers in town, and I don't think the Weathersfield Town Council should support that. Okay, thanks for those comments. Any other comments from Council? Councilor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. About uh, three or so weeks ago, I was reading the weekly management report, and in there, there was a discussion about how uh, many of the intersections are gonna get upgraded in town, and how that funding and um, engineering studies were in the process and they were looking for some feedback and some of the feedback I think I was thinking about was to ensure that while we do engineering studies about those intersections that we tie in our our um, our crime fighting ability and some of the discussions that we've had with the uh, chief of police wherein many of the cameras are not CCTV they do not connect to the police department some of them don't even exist and that we think about how often and the technology that's used at these intersections in developing uh, its engineering studies for the various intersections that are going to be done. So if we're going to put in hundreds of thousands of dollars, let's be aware that if we have the opportunity to put in CCTV, get into the police department, we have uh, various crime increase that we see going on now that we can, instead of having high-speed chases, we can just follow people on cameras and then eventually catch up with them. Um, and in addition to, if there's car accidents, there's video footage, we can unravel that uh, from, the, from the legal standpoint. Uh, and in addition to, there's also different technology upgrades where we have to, don't have to start cutting into the <coughs> pavement anymore, and it can help with traffic flow and that kinds of things. So I think that my thought is, through the mayor to the town manager, that as we start to go through understanding the rebuild of these intersections, that we incorporate all the appropriate technology, and if we are short in some way, that this council be aware of some of the possible upgrades in order to improve those intersections for the long future rather than the for short future. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Any other council comments? Okay, I just have a, a few announcements. Um, I'd like to thank physical services personnel for their hard work this weekend. Um, it, it was a mess with all the ice, and I appreciate all they did to maintain our town roads and also all of our parking lots. Um, the town hall parking lot is great. I've been in some really bad parking lots in the last two days. Um, another announcement is the taxes, the, or the January taxes are now due. Um, Unico Comedy Fundraiser is this Friday, January 25th at 8 p.m. Um, and then the wine and whiskey tasting event is Friday, February 1st at 6 p.m. These are both fundraisers um, in town that we, you know, if you'd like to attend, that would be wonderful. Um, so moving into town manager reports. Town manager, do you have any reports tonight? 
No reports. Okay, thank you. Town Clerk, do you have any communications this evening? Uh, we have been putting our new uh, ordinances in. Uh, we've been, we sent our ordinances out to be put in our new book for the, uh, the uh, council. And we have um, started budget practice in, in town for the next budget. So we have got the, the, all the paperwork now. Very good. Thank you. Okay, moving into council action, there are acceptances of resignations. We do have an accept a resignation, I believe. Do we have a motion? Mayor? Yes. Yes, I move we accept the resignation of Lita Burko from the Economic Development Improvement Commission. She is at 12 Mountain Laurel Drive. Her term was 12 28 16 to 6 30 18. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, we have some appointments to boards and commissions. May I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I move uh, first for the assessment Board of Appeals alternate, Jonathan R. Brown, 24 La Cava Lane, 12219 to 63022. To the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee, Christine T. Fortunato, 28 Fairmont Street, 12219 to 63020. To the Central Connecticut Health District, Jennifer D. Hill, 81 Broad Street, 12219 to 63020. And to the Historical Historic District Commission, Emily Sambrello, 85 Hillcrest Avenue, 12219 to 63020. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yep. Okay. Councilor Hurley? Um, I just had a comment on the Central Connecticut Health District. I probably should have commented before before this gets voted in. I saw that they consolidated, it looks like, in Rocky Hill. Is that true? The health district has moved. They're no longer, they no longer have offices yep. in town hall. So I think we were protesting that because now it's going to cost Weathersfield more. And I just want to get that on the table. I'm not sure how they did that without letting us know. When they were here and they told us it was um, they were going to increase their costs mm -hmm. to the town. So we said, why would you move our people out of town to consolidate and then raise, raise the cost for us? That's the, you know, sharing services. That just isn't how we're supposed to share services. I just wanted to get that out there. Nothing against Jennifer Hill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're good with the appointments. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, and I'd like to just make sure the town clerk sends a letter out to all of these members. I know a couple of them um, have been have been vacant a while, and they're looking forward to these appointments. And Councillor Hurley, I. I do agree with you um, that none of us were happy to find out that the Central Connecticut Health District was moving. And I, you know, um, we can definitely have them back in again and we can talk to them about their budget, especially in light of our upcoming budget session. It sounds like we can see if maybe they can come to our in the workshop so that we can talk to them about any additional increases because you're right now they have an office building in. Um, in Rocky Hill, they've left spaces empty in town halls, and now we'll, they'll have to be paying rent. So I do agree we should have them in because that's that is an additional cost we'll have uh, you know we'll have to bear that none of us agreed to. Can I say one more thing? You sure can. Um, there could be a possibility that maybe we look at removing ourselves from that health district and going back to our own health district. And yeah, then and if I, it's going to be. Uh, cost savings I mean it doesn't seem like that should work that way but if it is a cost savings we should think about doing that yeah and I would have I have no information on how much it would cost to do either way we'd have to have a, a discussion on that for sure but I understand your frustration um, okay so where are we now um, that was appointments to boards and commissions we're moving to other business uh, a vehicle lift for physical services. Do we have a motion? Councilor Forrest. I move to uh, purchase and have installed a truck lift 
from Ray Jurgen for an amount of $180,000. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Um, are you, Kathy, are you going to be discussing this issue or is Sally going to come up and discuss this more? No, Sally. Okay. Thank you. Sally Katz, Director of Physical Services. Um, this, this lift has been requested for a while now. Um, it is a vital piece of equipment that we use. I, I'm not really sure how else to explain it other than we use it constantly. We have a fleet of 85 trucks and vehicles that we maintain and, and um, fix and operate. The way to do it safely is to have a vehicle on a lift for a mechanic to be able to go under the vehicle to see in its entirety what is going on in the, in the vehicle. Um, it is the safest way to do it. And the lift that we currently have is 50 years old. And there's no way <coughs> to stop the age from happening. It no longer, that particular model is almost impossible to get parts for. The hydraulics on it, it's just, we have been keeping up on it, but it's just a matter of time before we have a failure. And it is something that we have been discussing for a while, understanding that this is an expenditure, but it is a piece of equipment that has lasted for 40 years, and we believe the next one will be able to also. Again, the added benefit, in addition to servicing what we service now, which are all of our smaller dump trucks and all of our other vehicles, is that the new lift gives us the capability to bring the service of fire apparatus in-house. It also <coughs> allows us to be able to, if in the future, we expand the size of our physical services vehicles to what they call triaxles instead of the double axles, it would give us the opportunity to service them in-house. You know, this was a very difficult weekend. We had a lot of snow, we had a lot of ice. We had some, some trucks that were going, that went down. We were able to bring those trucks in, fix what needed to be fixed, and they were back out on the road salting and sanding. If we needed to outsource all of those repairs, those trucks would have come off the road and they would have stayed off the road because we, would not have norm we wouldn't be able to do large scale repairs on them. Minor things, yes, we could, you know, uh, windshield wipers and, and some other things we could have been able to send them back on the road. But there is, as, as Councilor Martino discussed the last time, if there is a, a large repair that needs to be done, that truck is off the road. So we are incurring the price to, and the cost to tow that truck to then wait for a vehicle maintenance facility to look at it, diagnose it, get parts, fix it, and get it back to us. That wastes time. It will, it, it will cost us money because it will cost us more in the mechanics fees that a state-run facility uh, charges. We will be charged the upcharge on all materials and parts instead of doing the work in-house. And that's what we're here for. We're here to provide that service in-house to benefit the community and to keep our trucks on the road, to keep our people working, to do the work which benefits the community. And this lift allows us to do that. Um, I understand that there are people who have opposing viewpoints on it. All I can tell you is that this is not a frivolous purchase. This is a vital piece of equipment that we need in order to do our work. Okay. Council members, do you have questions? Councilor Latina? Sally, thank you for that explanation. I did just want to follow up on a couple things. The 180000 is that all in, like that's installation, that's yes. the lift itself? And it is for the removal of the old lift and the installation of the new one. It's also the installation of the new controls. And so it's, yes, that is an all in, it is an all in price. So nothing after that? No. We're just out and out purchasing it and putting it in? Yes. And this 180 that was approved in last year's budget, can that be used for anything else? At this, 
at this point, it was approved for that particular project in actually last year's uh, <coughs> the 16, 17, 17, 17, 18. Yeah, 17, 18, 18. sorry, budget. Um, so it was earmarked for that, I believe, through the, the CIP um, committee, the CIAC, excuse me. And so it was earmarked for that project. So if it's not used on this particular piece of equipment, it would just go back into the CIP pool? Say that if the money is not used for this, it would it would stay in the CIP yes. reserve account. Okay. Um, and you said that it can, this new lift would be able to handle the fire trucks? Yes. And as far as the OSHA report, regardless of what happens tonight, can we still get a copy of that? Well, right now we, um, and if Kathy doesn't mind, we had an, an initial meeting with the inspector who went through the points. We've just received the draft report and we are meeting with the director of OSHA um, at the end of the month who will then, after discussing what was written in the report with us, will issue a final report and certainly when we get that we can um, make it public. That would be very nice. Thank you. Other questions? Councilor Well. Uh -huh. Thank you, Sally. For and I know Jody had asked about the full one hundred eighty thousand dollars all mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Is there any environmental issues we got to worry about? Any leaks over the last fifty years of hydraulic fluid? When you know they cut it out, I remember taking the tour and seeing mm -hmm. it in in action. Mm -hmm. um, is there any remediation of you know? soil or anything like that or is it all the concrete around it will just literally be cut the old one taken out and the new one put in that is part of the reason why we want to get the new one in now is that we have not we have been given no indication that the lift that we currently have is in any way leaking it is the current lift does not have any containment so if it was leaking then um, we would have an issue. By all accounts, by the levels of fluid in it, we are not seeing that. I spoke with Derek Gregor, our, our engineer, and said, you know, what do you think? He said, basically, as they are taking it out, we can bring in um, one of our environmental engineers to observe what's going on. And if there was ever a question, we could do soil samples. But at this point, we've been given no indication that we have a leak or that we've had any type of a leak in it, but without having the containment, that's part of the reason why we want to get it out of there. 50 years old and no containment is, a, is to me and to my staff a risk. Okay. And then thank you for all the emails, the correspondence back and forth. I, you know, you've answered a couple of the questions on those emails, um, but you know, it's not privy to the public, a lot of those answers. If, if you can help us explain how many times have we had to in a year send be it a fire truck or a uh, physical services truck off campus to another vendor to to have service be it either a tow or if it can be driven there serviced and driven back part it, of the discussion is that is is we have made and i don't have a specific number for you right now in part because what we have tried to do is do the work in-house even though we know that it has taken longer to do and it has increased the inefficiency of doing it, for example, in the fire trucks. We have performed work from underneath the trucks, which then took potentially a few days instead of a few hours to do because sending a truck out is so expensive we haven't wanted to do it. And so I've taken people off the line from working on preventative maintenance and other things to work on the trucks, uh, on our newer dump trucks or something like that, so that we didn't have to send it out. Um, so this but, would limit the disruption of service that is currently provided by staff doing their normal routine. Absolutely. Right. And it will also, as I said, increase the efficiency in that we will be maintaining our vehicles. I think 
better than we do now. And we actually utilize our vehicles for quite a long period of time. You know, our average dump truck, we keep in the rotation for more than 10 years because of the fact that we are constantly making sure that they are roadworthy and that they are being cleaned and, and oiled and maintained. And it's sometimes to our detriment because we do take longer so that we keep the work in-house and that we're not sending it out because we know what that costs. Um, you know, as I said, as far as the tows, a tow is $400 at, at a minimum um, for a truck that size. So, you know, I know you were asking very specifically how many times have we done it. We've actually tried not to do it, potentially to our own detriment, because we didn't want to make an issue of it. We just kept it in-house, mm -hmm. used more time, and did the best that we could. You mentioned triaxles going mm -hmm. in the future. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, my fiscal radar just... I know. I know. Um, Aside from the fact that that's going to cost money, I mean, what are towns going that route? I mean, mm -hmm. what what's the advantage of having a triaxle versus uh, you know what we currently have in service? Well, for, at least for the dump trucks, right? Again, and that's not something we're we're advocating for right now. Our winter our winters are getting worse. The snow activities, the uh, amount of snow that we are getting, amount of the ice that we're getting is just coming faster and faster and and um, in more in more frequently so again it gives us the opportunity to be able to do the work faster we are not looking we are not making that ask now it's something we want to investigate potentially in the future looking to see if it would be smart because we have in the past um, used contracted trucks when we've had to a triaxle um, but again it's on a been on a very limited basis and I put it out there just as an example of the fact that this lift gives us if we choose to do so the opportunity to expand or change the fleet because of the fact of its pound rating okay. it doesn't mean that we're going to and it doesn't mean that we're going to ask for it but if we um, made that decision to we would have the opportunity because the lift would be able to sustain a higher weight a higher weight okay and i and then i just got one final question and thank you very much for answering these uh, surrounding towns newington rocky hill cromwell yes i would have supposed that harford probably has a lift like this yeah. but what about the other towns every single town has multiple lifts um and again you brought up newington Newington had a lift that was the same as ours and actually was newer than ours and they had a leak and they had an environmental problem and it cost them quite a lot of money to remediate and then work towards buying a new one. We don't want that to happen here. So this we, don't, we don't want to use it till it breaks, right. and yeah. then we either have a truck up in the middle of the air or, or an environmental issue. And this is... This isn't something that we could have other towns do a shared services with us. You, no. you know, they all have this lift, so it's not like we can go to Newington and say, "Hey, you've got a problem with one of your triaxles. We have a lift for you." Well, again, if we go to the types of lifts, yes, that, that, that towns have are this type of lift now because of the weight. Um, you know, if another town was having a problem with one of their lifts, we would certainly be able to help out. Um, but because they're used so often, it's not really um, easy to say, oh, well, on Tuesday, Tuesday, you know, Tuesdays come and, you know, we'll service your trucks. Or maybe you can mm -hmm. service our trucks because they're constantly being used. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? <clears throat> Deputy Mayor? Yeah. Uh, just a comment that I made the last time, uh, I just want to bring out again. Uh, what you know, Sally didn't bring out again tonight was the fact that, you know, we'll start with the dump trucks. Uh, dump truck goes down, two dump trucks go down. That means the, during a snowstorm, the other trucks have to pick up the slack mm -hmm. to take care of that, which then increases the wear and tear on those vehicles that makes them you know requiring replacement that much sooner if 
too many trucks go down, then they're at the point they have to turn around and call and bring in outside contractors to help them to fix those machines. So there's you know, variable costs that aren't being brought out here because she can't what if it. So those aren't in there. On the fire trucks, similar thing. If a fire truck is in there that is a specialty truck, as an example, you know, that's needed for a certain kind of thing, and while it's there and they're trying to work on it and it's taking longer, uh, a fire hits that needs that, it's going to take longer to get that fire out because it's going to have to call from mutual aid from somewhere else to bring it in, which is going to increase the damage on that house or building that's on fire. So, I mean, there's variable cost that she can't bring out that have to be taken into consideration when we vote on this. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Okay, I too have a, oh, I'm go ahead. sorry. No, that's okay, go ahead. The same question. <laughs> um, how long will it take to install? So how long will you be offline? Um, with that, um, we would put in the order, you know, now, and it would, um, we would be, it would probably be out for at least a week. So in our calculation, that would be extra cost if we do have to send stuff out. Again, we would work, we have a, a smaller lift and we would work to, depending on the time of the year, um, potentially send something out. Or again, we would work on it while it's on the ground for whatever time it takes us to do it. Does the new lift require like an electrical upgrade and is that in this cost? The controls package is in this cost. Yes. What it does, it will relocate where we have the um, electrical service for it, and it will relocate. The controls right now for the lift are on the ground, um, very close to where the lift is. The new controls are literally with joysticks, and so the operator can stand uh, quite a distance away and operate the lift up and down. So um, it will take a little bit more wiring. However, we do have the capacity to do that without, um, without going through the floor or going through any of the concrete. Thank you. Councilor Lesser, did you have something to add? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Just following up on <coughs> Jody's question. So if it's gonna be out for a week in a transition, if this mm -hmm. passes, is it prudent to wait till after winter in terms of the capacity now? Mm -hmm. And would your timing be to do it in the spring, perhaps? Yes, our timing would be to do it um, if we can early March. Um, March, April, it does still snow, or at least the last two years it snowed until April. Um, but we would do it in the spring as we transition into our spring activities, which utilizes the dump trucks less that when we are in the springtime, we're using more for hauling, for cleaning, for park maintenance, doing that kind of stuff versus, you know, um, the, the snow and, and ice removal. Um, but yes, get us, past, get us past the brunt of the winter. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I'd just like to add that this purchase is really an attempt at being proactive instead Absolutely. of reactive. Correct. That the lift is currently in operation, mm -hmm. not to not for the entire fleet, but for part of the fleet, you are able to use it now. But you're attempting to replace it before it breaks so that we don't get into a pattern of where we will have to send vehicles out. So you're trying to keep it from happening. Um, and I do see that there's a safety component to our mechanics and potentially to the environment if there were any kind of leak. Um, I also think it's important to note that we will be bringing all of our fleet in-house once we get this, um, and it'll improve our efficiency. So um, I am in favor of this purchase tonight. I think we've, we've had it on the table for over a year and a half, and um, the only thing it's done is raise the price by $15,000. So I think it's prudent that um, we do purchase this now. Um, it's, it's a needed piece of equipment. We're doing it before we have a true problem. And hopefully we'll you know, get it in before we have another price increase to the, to the equipment. Um, so if there are no other comments or questions, I'll call for a vote. Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? 
motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate all it. your time and um, your responsiveness to all of our questions and to the questions of the public. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dolores, did you get that vote? Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have park and recreation fee increase for town pools. Do we have a motion? Yes. <clears throat> Move to approve the proposed fee changes for town pools on the parks and recreation report dated December 20th, 2018. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. <clears throat> Kathy, <laughs> this is something you're quite knowledgeable about. Yeah. <laughs> I can definitely talk about the pool fees. Um, every year we look at our pool fees, we look at area towns, and we look to determine whether or not it's time to increase them. Um, we're at that point now where we haven't increased them in 10 years, and we're looking to do a minimal increase. And also it will stay current with what the other, the other area towns are doing, but it's minimal to our residents. And what we're looking at is with our pool passes, we currently do a indoor pool pass and an outdoor pool pass, separate pool passes. And we've had requests from residents to look at a year-round pool pass. So we actually are proposing that tonight as part of it. And with that proposal, there would be a discount if you bought your pool pass before Memorial Day because the rush happens right around when we open the pools. And sometimes there's uh, usually a line out the door to buy the pool pass. So we're trying to encourage people, if they're going to buy the pass, to consider the year-round pass and look at po possibly purchasing it before the Memorial Day weekend. So we've got a couple of things in this proposal. So there's the year-round pass, and um, we're only looking to increase the individual pass, $5, and the family pass, $10, if you buy it um, for one season or the other season. And then if you were to buy the year-round pass, we're not looking to increase that too much. We're just looking to, to make enough revenue so that we stay current with the revenue we're bringing in and also giving um, families and individuals a break if they were to buy the year-round pass. So that's part one of the, um, of the swim, the swimming for the pool passes. And then we're just looking to raise the daily admission a little bit um, with both um, children and adults. And um, we did have a, a, a resident did email today to say you didn't think about senior citizens because other towns do that also. So what I'm going to propose to do is to go back to the park board. We didn't think about the senior citizen population because we haven't had that in our fee structure. So we're going to go back, look at what area towns are doing, talk in the park board, and then we um, may possibly be coming back to council with a recommendation on that piece. But I don't have that ready for tonight. Um, so that's kind of where we are. And the individual pool pass, we're only looking to increase for uh, children, increase, go from $1 to $2, and from adults, from $3 to $4. And then as a non-resident, you can come and visit our pools as a guest of a resident, and we're looking to raise the daily admission for a child as a non-resident from $1 to $3, and a non-resident adult from $3 to $5. Thank you, Kathy. Are there any questions for Kathy? Councilor Rell? Oh, sorry. Uh, just a couple concerns. Are we doing this just to keep up with what other towns are doing near us? Because are we losing families or individuals to other towns to swim? Uh, it, it, is that ever the case or I mean I hate to say we're, we're simply raising our rates because Newington is at you know 65 and we're only at 55 um, what's what's the rationale what what is the rationale behind raising um, you know a family rate or individual rate like what is driving the cost to well one of the things we look at is maintaining the revenue that we do bring in for the uh, the swimming program. So that's a piece of it to make sure we continue to maintain that. We're not, we don't usually lose residents to other towns. We just like to look at what other towns are doing just to make sure that we're not A, overcharging or B, undercharging for what those rates might be. Okay. Um, 
are there additional costs that we shoulder as the town? I mean, uh, supplies. I know MDC rates have gone up. I mean, I would imagine our would would this help offset some of the increases in the MDC um, expenditures that the town is, you know, putting out there. Probably not as much as you'd like it to. It, right. It's certainly not. Our, 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 to, to operate swimming pools is an expensive proposition. And if you were to try and charge a, a pool pass to make up that difference, you'd be looking at the $500 rate for a, a family pool pass to begin to think about trying to have pools break even. <laughs> it really, it, it, they're just an expensive proposition. So what we try to do is to bring in revenue every year with the pools that goes towards the general revenue for the town. Okay. And then finally, something you and I have talked about in the past, um, the lifeguards at these pools, at least in the summertime, um, are they teenage workers, uh, summer positions, summer jobs, or are these you know, full-time employees that are there year-round? They're summer, well, they're either summer jobs or, or indoor season jobs, but they're not full-time. They're part-time. They're generally teenagers. Well, I would say the um, minimum age that we would hire would be 16. Okay. And um, because of all the certification that they receive, we generally need to pay them more than the minimum wage just because of their, um, their training mm -hmm. that's involved in this uh, job. Um. But if the minimum wage did go up from ten ten currently to a fifteen dollar an hour, do we pay them right now more than fifteen dollars an hour, or do we pay them less than fifteen dollars an hour? We pay them less than fifteen dollars an hour. So we may be looking at this in the future if minimum wage goes up to fifteen dollars an hour, to be able to recoup some of the costs that it cost uh, cost the town in salary. We would have to revisit this possible increase in the future. That is correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Hurley. All my all my questions were answered. Fantastic. <laughs> Any other council members have questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next we have a bid, miscellaneous paving. Preparation Rehabilitation Services. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to extend the miscellaneous paving preparation restoration contract with general paving and construction for three years until December 31st, 2021 at a cost of $1,550,000. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Good evening, Derek. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of the council. My name is Derek Greger. I'm the town engineer. I'm here again tonight to talk to you about uh, extension of our contract, of the miscellaneous pavement preparation restoration contract. Uh, as you're aware, General Paving has been our contractor under this uh, particular contract since 2005. The last solicitation we had for it was in 2014. Uh, they were the only bidder at the time. Their initial contract that started in 2014 uh, expired June of 2017. Uh, at that time, Town Council uh, approved an extension of 18 months on the contract uh, with the agreement that we would reduce the unit prices by 5% that were uh, issued in 2014. We had done that. That extension expired at the end of December. Um, so with that, the contractor had contacted the town requesting a 36-month extension to the contract, and they would add a second 5% reduction to the 14 uh, 2014 unit prices. Um, general paving, uh, as I discussed when I was up here a couple weeks ago, is a very critical component to our paving program. They work very integrally with town staff and our other uh, paving contractors that were hired off the state bid. They also assist physical services as needed. Um, they've been very responsive to us over the years and uh, seem to work very well when we need them. They're there, uh, which is very critical with the type of work that we're doing. So essentially the requested three-year extension uh, would have us at 2014 unit prices minus 10%. Um, you know, estimating out what we've spent on them over the last few years, at least for the paving program, uh, I'd be estimating we'd be saving about $40,000 a year for the same work we would have done in 2014 uh, because of the reduction. So just to summarize, uh, 
looking for an extension until December 31st, 2021 at a cost, uh, estimated cost of $1,550,000. Thank you. Are there any council questions or comments? Councilor Latina? It, I think it's a good deal. My problem is, is are we allowed to do an extension on an extension? Is there a policy that allows for that? Does it even speak to it? Yes, um, we uh, met with our finance director and he was here at our last meeting and we went over all that and it is council's prerogative to you have the ability as the council to set the purchasing procedures. Do you know that we've done this for anybody else? We have, this contract was initially been 2005. I believe with from my understanding with that contract, it, it was extended a couple of times. Um, then it was rebid in 2011 and then rebid in 2014, which is the contract we're working under now. So in talking with the finance director, um, based on our ordinance, as Kathy said, council has the option to uh, extend contracts uh, at their will. Any other questions? I'm sorry, do you have some follow up? No, I was just gonna say that, you know, we should just, while I think you've done your due diligence here, we should make maybe a look at that policy to make sure we are doing that so that we're not skipping the bid process every so often because I think it's really incumbent upon us to find the best um, price out there and not just continually extend and extend and extend. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Nothing. Anything down here? Okay, seeing nothing else, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Next we have an ordinance for introduction, the resolution of support for MDC's integrated plan approach long-term control plan. So we will take that up. Kathy, are we taking that up at the second meeting in February, or will that be acted on at the first meeting in February? You can act on it at the first meeting in February. Okay. Thank you for that well, clarification. Can I ask a question? Sure. I don't think that answered the question. Are we or are we not? Because that would depend on how much, you know, we kind of review this and ask questions about it. So be, while we're going to the next meeting. So if it's at the next meeting, we would ask more questions. If it's a month out, we can ask our questions a little slower. So I think we need to know what the process is going to be for these. I, I had anticipated that you would vote on it at the next meeting, and we can certainly have whatever information you need available at that time. Okay. Well, I'll ask my I'll send some questions on. Okay. And is this time sensitive to the MDC? Yes. <clears throat> are they providing an update as well, or are we just going with what they've submitted to us? Talk into the uh, I asked, are they providing an update uh, that evening or in February, or are, they, are we just going with what they've submitted and asking questions there? Will there be someone from MDC at the meeting? If I certainly could request that someone come. They did come back in the fall to go over all this, but certainly I could ask them to have someone here. I believe that, I believe they thought we would be acting on this after that presentation in the fall and it somehow did not make it into the process. So this is a little bit of an, an afterthought that we're doing it now. I, uh, how many other towns have already voted on it? I believe five have already voted on it. Okay. In favor? Yes. We're required to vote on this? That's what I asked. <laughs> I also asked what happens if we don't approve it? What happens right. if we vote no? Because I don't think we have a say. They're going to increase the prices no matter. Exactly. And this is for their long-term project, whether they alter the, the way they do it. Is that correct? That's yeah. correct. They're looking at doing a long-term plan that, is, um, that um, changes how the towns are, um, have to pay the fees over the years. I don't think it's necessary, but that's my opinion. I, I, what they're looking for is they're looking for the towns to support when they go to DEEP to say that this is the plan they would prefer 
that get um, approved for their future in terms of how they're going to be sending their fees out to the towns. I can appreciate that, but I don't like the increase. I'm sure no one else does either. Right, and I think this will be a good conversation for our next meeting. <laughs> Um, moving on, we have the December 17th regular meeting minutes. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Are there any changes or corrections? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? One. Sorry? No. We have one. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we have the January 7th workshop meeting minutes. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Are there any changes, corrections? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Uh, we are back into public comment. Members of the public have five minutes to speak. Please come up and state your name. Mr. Colantonio. Good evening again, Gascol Antonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Uh, I must say that uh, basically what I heard tonight regarding increasing the fees to go to the swimming pool, says, come on, huh? I, and I don't swim. Talk louder. Oh, I don't swim. But just to increase, what do we offer in Wethersfield? We look around like, you know, basically Rocky Hill and, and Newington, and it says, well, you know, they're doing the same thing. But as I read it someplace, the mill rate in Wethersfield is much higher than in Rocky Hill and, and Newington. Do we really have to charge? For the people that live in Wethersfield, I think it should be free. Come on. Huh? This, is, this is like, you know, nickel and diamond. The, the, us, us people living in Wethersfield. Everybody's living. There are a lot of houses for sale. The more tax we give them, the more of it an incentive for them to live this this done uh, i guess you know the the minimum wage fifteen dollars an hour and i'm a foreigner i always work for minimum wages probably but anyway uh i i think it's a bad idea in other words if i want to open up a little bicycle shop repair and i want to hire a couple students you know give them something to do you, the town, is going to tell me, says, either you pay them $15 an hour or you cannot have it. The, I state, think that, the state's going to tell them that. Well, I understand, <laughs> but, I mean, if we go along with that and we're going to pass it along, it's 15 it's, it's all over the place. I think it's, I think it's ridiculous. You know, and don't forget, when the minimum wage goes up, if, if you have a group of people and you have a supervisor and everybody makes, like, you know, $13 an hour and the supervisor makes 15 now, if you bring everybody 15, what happened with the supervisor that used to make 15? He has to go up too. And, and that doesn't mean that if you pay somebody more money that they can afford more. I always stated right here when I used to make less, I could afford more. Now that I make more, I can afford less. Why? Because even though I make it, whenever I go out of the house and I buy something, I got to pay more. So what is the sense of really making more money if you have to give it away anyway, or it's going to cost you more for whatever you buy. I think it's, I think it's crazy. It makes, us, uh, it makes us less competitive with the rest of the world. I don't like it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Mr. Young? Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, regarding your vehicle lift, um, I don't believe you needed that. I also believe that Sally should have given us the information that was asked for. She said that she wants to expand or change the fleet. Uh, this new lift would come into play. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, she talks about providing employment for her people, keeping them busy. Maybe they're not busy. Maybe they can get along with a few extra less ones down there. 
especially since you've spent so much money on equipment. I mean, you look around, every truck, brand new, or pretty darn new. Now she's talking about if we get triaxles. I think we have a couple of them already, don't we? And we at least have a triaxle on our fire engines. So, I, I don't know, folks. You just keep you just keep burying us, and you don't care. Same thing with the fifteen dollar per hour wage. You know, uh, the young people. Yeah, they like to make fifteen dollars an hour, but on the other hand, can we afford that? As a town, then you're going to build that into the base and increase the tax even more on the rest of us. Not only that, I mean, you have a number of different kinds of young people you hire in town. It's not just the ones at the swimming pool. You got them at the indoor pool. You have them, all, you have them at the football games. You're going to be paying them $15 an hour? I, I don't get it, folks. Um, you, usually, education helps you get your, your rate. And... I don't know why, why we're not putting education ahead of instead of just they should get it. Earlier I was talking about the Rose Farm, the, Ro uh, the Rose Berry Farm, and uh, how it's, it's sold for $1.9 million, 50 acres. I just wanted to drop off this article to the town clerk so she can put it in the record. Uh, one, of the, one of the council members said uh, he was concerned that the town hit the right price and not overpay for it. That's what he was talking about one of the purchases. He was talking about the Rose Farm. And then he goes on to talk about the New England Patriots as an example. And he said one of the reasons they are so extremely successful is that they have not overpaid their players. As we think about the price of land, um, I'm worried about the precedent. It can end up setting. Something to think about. And then he goes on to talk about that they have an independent auditor who looks at the comparables and then comes up with a figure. And that's the way they've been doing it for 25 years. Maybe that means why they've been so successful and how it's been so embraced over there in Glastonbury. We're here, it's just jammed down our throats. Here you go, Dolores. You can have these to put into the record. I can't put them in the record, I'm sorry. You can't? No. Oh, I'll send it out on the email then, all over the world then. That's fine, no problem, it'll go. Uh, next, I did speak about the three different properties that sold in central Connecticut. That was Windsor, Glastonbury, and South Glastonbury, as comparables. To the, to the Keisha farm. And as I said, the average was $25,300 times your 32 acres. That's $810,000 based on comparables of 2018. That's all you should be paying in that neighborhood. 2.4, I want to see you justify that, ladies and gentlemen. I want to see that appraisal that you refuse to put up on your website and refuse to send to me because I want to see that and I want to see how your appraiser came up with $2.4 million after looking at all of these properties that are down in the dumps and you're going to pay Gold Coast price for that property up on the hill. Let me say, down in... East Hartford, there was a property that's for sale. Since I've been talking about properties that sold, and I've been talking about properties that are on the market. Here's one that just came up. Matter of fact, probably eight came up in the last two weeks for sale. Mr. Young, Mr. Young, the same you places that I go to, okay? Mr. Young, if you'll just finish up, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll finish it up. Yeah, here's a 20-acre here's a 20 20, 20 parcel in the town of East Hartford for sale. It says potential subdivision. All utilities, $395,000. Can you believe that? That's $19,000 an acre. Okay, madam. thank you, Mr. Young. Yes, madam, I'll be back. You thank know you. I will. I know. Is there anybody else? You should really consider what I've said. 
go back and Thank renegotiate. You. Is or there get anybody rid of else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Mazzarella? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. Um, I'm disappointed. I knew the lift would pass, but I'm disappointed in how it passed. Numerous people asked for dollar figures on what it cost to maintain these trucks that we may or may not have the ability to lift. And it was asked in 2017 by myself and two other members of the town council and Ms. Katz said she would get, she didn't have those numbers that night, but she would get those. To my knowledge, those numbers never got presented, at least not to the public. Again, I asked for them at the workshop meeting. Mr. Forrest asked for them at the workshop meeting. Nobody got the numbers, or you're not telling the public. I'm not privy to it, but if the number exists, why don't we hear it? And I don't think that's the way to do business. I think the town ought to be able to have an accounting system in place for maintenance of what it costs to run that garage down there. That's essentially what it is. It's a garage. And they maintain a lot of different pieces of equipment. And I would think in this day and age of software and computers, it wouldn't be too much to ask to track the maintenance costs on each and every piece of equipment, heavy equipment. Okay, we don't care about a weed whacker or a lawnmower, okay? But when you have an expensive piece of machinery like a fire apparatus that's $600,000, I want to see a piece of paper that tells you every maintenance activity that was performed on that truck every time it broke down, how much it cost, how many man hours of labor were expended maintaining that truck, and all the parts that got purchased for that truck. And those systems exist. Fleet maintenance has that kind of software. It's not a big ask. I would have rather seen you spend $25,000 on a software upgrade or maybe a supervisor for the garage that can run that in an orderly fashion so that you know what you're spending. How are we supposed to run the town in a cost-effective manner if we don't even know what our costs are? We couldn't even learn how many trucks went out to be repaired. Was it one, 10, 50? Don't know. All we got was an example of what it might cost to replace a pump. We don't even know what kind of pump it was. And there was a lot of false information that was being spread around. It is no more dangerous working under the truck if it's supported on a proper jack stand with a proper jack, OSHA approved, than it is if a person's standing under an OSHA approved lift. It's not a, it's not a safety issue, okay? If you, if you talk to different people in the business, there are a lot of mechanics and a lot of truck shops that prefer not to work on the lift on a heavy truck. It's just as easy to work under the truck. And we heard that, well, you we can't get a good view of what's going on. That's, that is absolutely not true. And it's, it's insulting to have to sit there and listen to that, okay? I, I'm just completely disappointed. I would rather see the thing tabled. How much money did we spend in the 18 months that this thing was tabled? Did a lot of trucks go out for maintenance? Did the work schedule get elongated? I'm, I just don't buy it. And I don't understand what the purpose of having the town council is if everything gets voted, everything that gets presented to spend money gets approved. I've been coming here, I think, four years now. I, I think I might have missed one meeting. I've never seen anything voted no. If the town staff recommends it, it's a slam dunk and it gets approved. And I don't think you're doing your jobs. You should be evaluating all the information, getting all the information, vetting it out if you have to. And I realize you might not have as much free time as I have, 
but that's part of the job and you you signed up for the job so again I would hope in future things you do a little bit more homework get all the answers that you that you ask or that the public asks um, I tried to go about it diplomatically I sent some emails uh, that didn't work I'll have to come up with something else thank you thank you mr. Mazzarella anybody else in the public okay um, may I have a motion to go into executive session I move we go into executive session okay second, second all in favor yes Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Have a good night.